Hi, I'm Juliana Rojas. I'm writer and director for Cidade Campo. It's a feature film from Brazil uh, that is showing at uh, Berlinale Encounters. And it's a film uh, in two parts that tells the stories about uh, migration. The first part is about uh, Joana, who moves to the city after she loses her farm in a natural uh, accident, and she has to restart her life uh, in a different uh, surroundings. And the second part is about a couple of women, uh, Flavia and Mara, that moved to the countryside after, they, uh, after fa Flavia's father dies and leaves her his farm. And they try to build a life in the countryside, but have to face the realities of uh, moving there. And also Flavia has to cope with the loss of her father and the other saying more about her background. O que, que é a casa da Tânia? Você quer o Jaime? É que eu só vi foto da Septitim. Eu sou Joana. Sou irmã da sua avó. Gordo, quem é? Hi, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is João Borbovac, and this time we are discussing the film Cidade Campo. Hi, welcome to the festival. Thank welcome you. Welcome to the Teddy Award. Um, the film has a very unique and peculiar structure uh, to it. Can you please explain a little bit about how you structured the narrative? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the film uh, main theme is about uh, uh, migration and how uh, our place of orange and changing that going away from that place to another one that is different uh, affect us and uh, I wanted to show different perspectives about who uh, lives in the city and goes to the countryside and vice versa so it's a film that is structured in two parts uh, with different characters and different stories. Um, but I wanted that despite there are different stories, that you would have elements that connect mm -hmm. both of them so it feels like one movie. Yeah. So in the first part, um, we, feel, we follow Joana, who is um, after a natural disaster, after a, a, a flood, um, is forced to to leave the countryside where she mm -hmm. worked as a farmer, a rural uh, worker, and moves to Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. to the big city, and moves uh, in together temporarily um, with her uh, sister and her sister's uh, grandson. Um, and uh, she is also forced in many ways to confront um, her past and the surrounding reality as well. And then in the second part of the film, uh, which follows Flavia and Mara, um, a couple who, after Flavia's dad dies, they move um, to the countryside from the city um, to his uh, estate that they, that they inherit. Um, and they also are forced um, to confront the past and confront the reality um, around them. And it happens quite differently in both scenarios. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate a little bit on this aspect of the film? Uh, what exactly? How do they confront the past and uh, the reality, yeah. and what is it that forces them to uh -huh. do that? Yeah, in the first part, uh, Joana is dealing with uh, the loss of the 
her homeland and she lost ev uh, her city basically disappeared the mm -hmm. place that she lived in yeah. uh, so she has to reconstruct her life in Sao Paulo uh, but uh, when she moved to Sao Paulo and starts to be close to her uh, sister's grandson uh, she that that relationship reminds her of her uh, son, which she lost contact a long time ago, and we don't know if he's alive or, or he's dead. So we had a lot Joana dealing with her ghosts from the past and the memories, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually trying to cope with her losses. And in the second part, the uh, this couple of women, uh, Flavia and Mara, they moved to uh, Flavia's uh, father farm. Uh, he passed away recently, and uh, for Flavia, it's a discovery of more the universe of her father because she didn't know him quite well, and also to find out her own roots and her an ancestry in that place. So yeah. it's a journey for Flavia. It's a journey of self-discovery, and right. for Joanna, is a a journey of uh, dealing with the past and trying to make new relationships. Yeah. How did you translate all of that um, onto the screen? So can you tell us a little bit about the visual qualities, mm -hmm. the, the cinematic language that you use? Yeah, because the film deals also with uh, life and death mm -hmm. and memories and ghosts, we use elements of uh, fantastic cinema, uh, sometimes elements of suspense and even horror because of the ghosts, the phantom phantasmagoric part. Uh, so we try to build a progression. Uh, in the beginning, the film is more materialistic, more concrete. When you are in the city, very pragmatic. And then it starts to be more surreal and more dreamlike. And in the second part, we have a strong atmosphere because yeah. we, they are in the woods, surrounded by the woods. And we did that with uh, the cinematography that is getting more dense as the film goes. And also we use a lot of uh, filters to make uh, it feels like it's very dreamlike. I want yes. that in the second part of the film that there would be a point where you don't know if you are seeing reality or if it's a dream or if it's like a, a, a surreal scene, uh, that things would blend. You don't know exactly what's happening. Yeah. And you use also the language of dreams in the, in the film. And we also worked that uh, feeling using image fusions yeah. Yeah, in the right. editing. Yeah, nature plays a very crucial part in this film, um, actually in both uh, parts of it, and it really um, appears as like an, as an authoritative force um, in the film. Obviously, mm -hmm. Joanna lost her home and her entire village to to a natural catastrophe, and then she partly finds solace or refuge in in working in this tiny garden that um, that her sister has, and then in the second part, as you said, it it obviously very dominantly plays in nature. Uh, the film. How did you approach working with this thematic in the film? Yeah, f for me. It's important because nature is connected to land and it's uh, also about the connection of these characters to their homeland. Uh, and also because there is an atmosphere that uh, talks about the times that we are living in, that mm -hmm. is a time of climate change due yeah. to extreme exploration of natural resources and due to the action of the capitalism. So we f start to feel like in my country, if you feel very clear, uh, those changes affecting yeah. the weather and affecting the population. And the, those who are most vulnerable, they suffer more with extreme heat 
or floods. Right. So uh, I wanted that nature would be a character in the movie, that mm -hmm. we could hear nature speak also, especially in the yeah. second part, that they try right. to cultivate the land and the, uh, the land is dry. They, they, start to sh just, they start to see some signals from the nature that something is not right. Yeah, and in the second part, it's also like a natural um, tool when they do this ayahuasca trip, which then really serves in many ways as a catalyst um, for a lot of the reckoning that's um, that's happening mm -hmm. with the character. So it was also interesting to see how nature has these, yeah, multiple voices, mm -hmm. so to speak. So it's a character that doesn't always show itself in the one and the same light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they... Flavia discovers that her father was using ayahuasca uh, and she wants to, to try it to, in order to try to connect to, with him. And when they do that, it kind of opens up their senses to, uh, to nature and to the spirits of the woods. So uh, it is like a gateway to try to connect with this other world and these other forces. Right. And connection, of course, plays, again, an important role um, in the film, in both parts of the film. And uh, it runs on a familiar level. There are connections within the family is an important topic that you work on, but also kind of like chosen family, mm -hmm. communities that we connect to. Can you tell us a bit about more in detail about these different modes of connection mm -hmm. that the characters in the film mm -hmm. take? Yeah, I think in both parts we deal with uh, family relations, especially uh, mother to son and daughter to father, but also the possibility that you uh, choose your own family, that you can break, break if it's, it didn't work, that relationship, that you can seek other kinds of possible uh, relationships, uh, like Joanna, she finds in her workmates a place of mm -hmm. comfort and, pos and also her her sister's grandson is someone that she connects to, although they have so such different ages and right. backgrounds. And in the second part, we have a, a lesbian couple uh, that is, they also form a different kind of family that is not very much represented in cinema. And we wanted to show that show those characters to have love and affection and sensuality. Uh, and there's also different kinds of bodies that we don't see so much represented. Uh, fat bodies, black bodies, uh, and, and with different uh, representations of uh, femininity. Uh, so for us, it was important to, to have this couple. Uh, trying this new life and living this kind of uh, conflicts. Uh, and also they connect with the people that they meet, like the GC who is a friend of Flavia's father, is someone who uh, walks by and they have a connection yeah. and they exchange knowledge. So for me, it's about talking about those encounters that we have in life. Uh, and the possibility of affection for uh, those groups that are more vulnerable. Right, and also, as you mentioned, these different, um, more informal ways of exchanging knowledge and, and maybe also like collectively producing knowledge about our surroundings. It is obviously very dominant in the second part of the film, but even in the first part as well, there is this sense of collectivity with, with Joanna and her co co-workers whom are very uh, firmly fighting for, for better working conditions mm -hmm. for themselves. Um, can you maybe talk a little bit more about this aspect of the film? Yeah, yeah it's something that I try to 
have in most of my films that I'm, I'm very interested in work relations. Uh, and in this film, I wanted to, to talk about uh, a kind of precarization of work relations mm -hmm. yeah. because she goes to work as a, a, a cleaning professional in an, an app. Yeah. So it's uh, not a formal way. She's not employed. She's like right. autonomous and she doesn't have work rights. But she finds this group of uh, women that work in the same act, uh, group from the same app and they they gather and there they have a chance to form like a union to fight for better co conditions of work so it's like showing those groups but also the possibility that they can resist and they can organize to uh, to change their reality right and it's also a very um it's understatedly, but it's a very queer group mm -hmm. um, of support that mm -hmm. that Joanna finds um, with these women. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a bit more about this? Yeah, it's a diverse group uh, yeah. that we have Neuza, who is a, a trans woman, and we have uh, Angela, who is a, a, a black woman. Uh, we try to make it a, a diverse group mm -hmm. of characters and that uh, we would show the possibility of these people from different mm. identities and backgrounds who could, could uh, be together and united for, and get stronger as a com community. Right. Yeah, that's, that's very true because in many ways the film sort of advocates for this mm -hmm. coming together and like breaking with this um, neoliberal capitalist mm -hmm. model of individuality and finding power more in collectivity mm -hmm. and um, and community. Mm -hmm. um, was this something that you um, wanted audiences to, to take away from the film or is it...? The film was made in a time of great pessimism because mm. it was the, during the pandemic yeah. and also during the Bolsonaro government in Brazil, mm, I see. who was a very uh, uh, right-oriented, uh, yes. negationist, uh, homophobic, racist, misogynist uh, government. Uh, so it was a very uh, tense time because we didn't know it was hard to imagine the future because it was yeah. hard to live the present. Uh, but I didn't want the film, I, I wanted to have like a glimpse of hope in the mm -hmm. film. I didn't want to be like delusional and romanticize yeah. uh, the story. I wanted to be realistic and critic, but also I wanted to have a possibility of change. So yeah. for me, it was important that we have that in the first part, that possibility of union yeah. and to, to create power. And also in the second part, a possibility of the dealing with the knowledge that they acquire and try a different start. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very okay. much. It was, it was very lovely and it was really an eye-opening um, conversation about the film. Um, I wish you all the best for the Berlinale and okay. hopefully we see each other on Friday at the okay. Tati Award. Thank, Thank you, you very much.